Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one is the Mil Mi-26. It's a massive helicopter, before we get started. By the way, I've got something to say about massive helicopters. When I was at school, every year, this giant Chinook, I was in the cadets, like where you pretend to be soldiers, and every year this giant Chinook would come, and it would land on one of the school fields, and take the cadets up for like this tour on this giant helicopter around, and it was awesome. And I was like 12 years old, and there was nothing I was looking for to, forward to more than getting on this giant helicopter. And then by the time I'm 14 and I could join the cadets, they didn't do the helicopter trips anymore. So I'm very bitter about helicopters. Anyway, this video is made possible by The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service. You can learn at your own pace, no tests, no schedules. Free trial through the link below. They, of course, make this stuff possible. So thanks to them, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a bit. But enough rambling. Let's get into the video. If you've ever wondered whether a helicopter would be able to lift a passenger airline, I haven't, but now I do, I can confirm that not only is it possible, but the Russians did it just a few years ago. The giant workhorse that day which lifted the Tupolev Tu-135 airliner was none other than the legendary Mi-26 helicopter, the largest, most powerful helicopter to ever go into serial production. This is a true mechanical monster in the most Soviet Union kind of way. The Mi-26 is vast bulk, has a payload capacity twice that size of the American Chinook helicopter, which is massive as it is. It's got these two giant uh, rotor blades. It's a huge machine, while its rotators have the same wingspan as an Airbus A380. But to tell you the truth of the Mi-26, we need to start with another helicopter. Quite astonishingly, the Mi-26 was actually a smaller, lighter version of what the Soviets had first envisioned, because the Soviets always think, well, absolutely massive. You've seen enough Mega Projects videos to know that. Well, hopefully. Maybe this is the first one you've ever seen. In that case, welcome to Mega Projects. Go back and watch the old stuff if you want to, no pressure. The prototype, named Mil V-12, remains to this day the largest helicopter ever to be built. It had a brief, short-lived history in which it shattered numerous world records while also laying the blueprints of what would come later with the Mi-26. The first prototype, Mil V-12, with the registration SSSR21142, Important information there took to the skies for the first time on the 10th of July 1968, lifting with it a world record 31 tons to an altitude of 2,951 meters. That's 9,682 feet. Less than a month later, that record was eclipsed on the 6th of August 1969 when it heaved 44 tons to a height of 2,255 meters. That's 7,398 feet. And I'm saying the feet here, and I know I said I'd just do metric and put the feet on screen, but that's because even though I primarily use metric, I still think of planes flying at 30,000 feet, so I feel like the comparison is useful. I mean passenger planes flying at 30,000 feet. The second prototype was also constructed but didn't fly for the first time until March 1973. While the Mil V-12 had been a great success, it was discontinued in 1974, primarily because its intended use to carry heavy nuclear weapons was no longer needed. And that's not because we no longer need nuclear weapons, although that would be nice, but because we found more efficient ways to get them across the world at other people. While the Mil V-12 was an astonishing record breaker, the Soviets decided they needed something smaller. The project was named Eisdelayat 90, or Project 90, with the designation Mi-26 coming later, and it was required to have an empty weight less than half its maximum takeoff weight. The Mi-26 was designed by Marat Tyshenko, who had worked under the famed Mikhail Mil, founder of the OKB-329 Design Bureau, Moscow's primary helicopter plant, which opened in 1947 and built the first Soviet mass-produced helicopters. The Soviets already had several heavy-lift helicopters, namely the Mi-6 and the M-12. At the time, the Mi-6 was the world's largest and fastest production helicopter with a top speed 300 km an hour and a wing area of 35 meters squared, but the new helicopter would need to replace it. The Mi-26 would go on to be used for both military and civilian use, but it was primarily built to be able to lug the gigantic 
authentic military hardware that the Soviets had in their arsenal, such as the 13-ton amphibious carrier and mobile ballistic missiles. The idea was that they could be used in conjunction with the other mighty transportation goliath, the Antonov AN-22. And if you've been following along with Mega Projects, you'll know that the AN-22 still holds the world record for a payload capacity of any aircraft. But while most things could be carried in the Antonov AN-22, its large landing requirements limited its use. A powerful, heavy-lifting helicopter would, therefore, be needed in order to move military hardware to more remote areas. The prototype MI-26 got airborne for the first time on the 14th of December 1977, but the first production version didn't arrive until the 4th of October 1980. Full development was completed in 1983, and two years later it was being used for both Soviet military and commercial service. The MI-26 has the distinction of being the first factory-equipped helicopter with a single eight-blade main lift rotor made of titanium and is powered by two 11,000 horsepower Ivchenko Progress AI-136 turboshaft engines. The helicopter is capable of operating on only one engine in the event of the other failing. I guess that's what 11,000 horsepower gets you. The MI-26 has a payload capacity of up to 20 tons, which is roughly the same as 11 family-sized cars. It comes with an empty weight of just over 28 tons, making it the second heaviest helicopter ever after the Mil V-12. The helicopter measures 40 meters in length and has a height of 8.1 meters. In terms of human capacity, the MI-26 can accommodate 90 combat-ready troops, 63 three seated civilians, or when things are dire, 60 stretchers. The crew of five is composed of two pilots, a flight engineer, a navigator, and a flight technician. The MI-26 has a maximum speed of 295 kilometers an hour and a range of 800 kilometers. Its service ceiling is 4,600 meters, the height of 14 Eiffel Towers, but it would rarely go anywhere near this. Now, before we get into some more incredible facts and stats and stories, about this absolute beast of a helicopter, let me thank today's sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. You can learn from the world's best professors on The Great Courses Plus. Now, if you're enjoying this channel and you really wanted to dive more into sort of the detailed engineering, the science behind it all, look, I'm not a professor. I don't know all of that incredible stuff, but you know who, who does have great professors? The Great Courses Plus. They're not gonna let you down when it comes to learning some engineering. Indeed, they've got a whole course 29 lectures all about the science of flight. It's a great watch. If you're enjoying this one, you'll probably love it. Basically, The Great Courses Plus is a university education, but it's at your own pace. There are no tests, no schedules, and it's incredibly easy to access. PC, tablet, phone, however you like. They've also got audio streaming, super convenient, so you can listen and learn on the move and there are thousands of lectures to choose from. So it's great stuff. Try it for free. Get a free trial at thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash megaprojects or click the link in the description below. Of course, doing that supports the show, keeps me making more Mega Projects videos, and let's get back to it. By the time the MI-26 came into service, the Cold War it was already winding down, but the world's most powerful helicopter had still seen plenty of action. One of the earliest programs that the MI-26 was involved with was the Buran Space Program. When the 225 was initially designed to be able to carry the Buran Space Shuttle on its back, something that it only did once. Before this, the Soviets had the idea of using the MI-26 to transport the shuttle, but tests proved dangerous and they were fortunately abandoned. On the 26th of April, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power station exploded. In the coming days, weeks, and months, as many as 30 specially designed MI-26s took part in the operation to prevent an all-out nuclear disaster. Oh an even worse nuclear disaster. The helicopters were used both to measure radiation above the reactor and also drop insulating material to cover it. This new design came with a filter system and protective screens mounted in the cabins to protect the crew from radiation. But how much this really worked, we don't know. Soviet Union a little bit was a little bit tight-lipped about this stuff. But moving on from that, and by the way, if you'd like to learn more about Chernobyl, we did a video all about the new sarcophagus which covers Chernobyl, the new safe confinement. I think that might have been the first video on this channel, or one of the first at least. Go back and check it out if you fancy it. Anyway, no question the most bizarre use of this giant helicopter occurred in October of 1999. 
An MI-26 was called into action to transport something that hadn't moved for around 23,000 years. The 25-ton block of frozen soil that was moved contained the preserved remains of a woolly mammoth, who would later be christened Yarkov Mammoth after the young boy who had found it. This was a good five tons over what it was designed to carry, and after the trip from the Siberian tundra to a lab in Katanga in northern Russia, the helicopter was returned to the factory to have checks done on its airframe. The helicopter was fine, but we're sorry to report that the mammoth was definitely dead upon arrival and currently sits in an ice cave in Katanga, where he still is studied by scientists. Maybe it'll wake up when they thaw it. It won't. In 2002, two American Chinook helicopters went down in the mountains of Afghanistan at altitudes of 2,600 meters (8,500 feet) and 3,100 meters (10,200 feet). The Americans do, of course, have their own heavy lifting helicopters, but the weight of the Chinooks exceeded the maximum payload of nine tons that the U.S.'s military Sikorsky CH-53E could carry. There was only one helicopter that would be able to do the job. Now, the U.S. was certainly not about to go asking the Russian government for direct assistance. Instead, it was done through. Skylink Aviation in Toronto and Sports Flight, a Russian company which operated three civilian Mi-26s. For a small fee of $300,000, the U.S. leased one of the helicopters and flew one of the Chinooks out of the mountains and back to Kabul. The other has since been deemed unrepairable and was just left there. Six months later, another Chinook made a hard landing north of Bagram, and once again, an Mi-26 was called into action. On the 12th of May 2008, the grounds in Sichuan Province in China began to shake. The magnitude 8 earthquake killed almost 90,000 people, with many rivers becoming blocked because of landslides. The results of this were the so-called quake lakes. These large bodies of water steadily built up behind many dams that had been created across the rivers. Eventually, some of these small dams burst, sending torrents of water downstream. At least one MI-26 belonging to a branch of China's Civil Aviation Service participated in the operation around Sichuan Province, bringing in heavy earth-moving tractors to Tangjiashan Mountain, an area difficult to access even in the best of times. Over 1,200 soldiers and experts arrived in the area shortly after the earthquake, and 200,000 were evacuated downriver from the slowly expanding quake lakes. But while most of the MI-26's operational history has been through peaceful means, Let's not forget that they were designed as military helicopters. On the 19th of August 2002, an overloaded Mi-26 with 142 people on board was traveling near the Chechen capital of Grozny. A service to MSL, fired from an apartment block on the outskirts of the city by Chechen separatists, hit the Mi-26. The helicopter began to spin out of control and crash-landed near the Kankala military airbase. 127 people died in the incident, the greatest loss of life in helicopter aviation history. Over the years, there have been no less than 14 variations of the Mi-26, ranging from disaster-specific models to improved military versions. The Mi-26TM comes with an undernose gondola to be used as a crane. The Mi-26TP is a specific firefighting version complete with an internal 15,000-liter capacity fire retardant tank. The Mi-26MS has been specially designed as a medical evacuation helicopter to be used either as a field ambulance or even its own field hospital. The Mi-26T2V appeared in August 2018 and is the latest model of the Mi-26 to be strictly used by the Russian military. It comes with the new NPK-92V avionics suite, allowing for automatic mode, airborne defense complex, Vitebisk anti-blast seats, and new navigation and satellite communication systems. The cockpit itself has also seen a significant upgrade and now comes with multifunctional displays. The Mi-26 has also proven to be a huge success outside of Russia. It has been exported for use in 15 different countries, all of which use it for military purposes purposes, except for China, who finds uses for both military and civilian purposes, and Belgium, who uses it just for civilian purposes. Just in case you're interested in purchasing one of these yourself, the cost of a single Mi-26 ranges from between $20 to $25 million. This rugged powerhouse of a helicopter is now nearing 40 years in general production, and as of 2015, 316 have been built. But it doesn't seem like this monster will be going anywhere soon. The various upgrades that have been added show just how confident the Russians are about the Mi-26. Their expertise has even been recruited by the Chinese government, eager to develop their own heavy-lifting helicopter that will be able to operate in the mountains of Tibet. What has been designed is slightly smaller than the Mi-26, but it still bears all of the hallmarks. A few years ago, a retired Tupolev Tu-134 airliner needed to be transported to St. Petersburg, where it would become a training tool at the Emergency Situations Training Center. This is by no means an enormous airliner, but it still weighs roughly 28 tons. 
Now, why it couldn't fly there itself, we aren't quite sure, but hey, when you've got plenty of MI-26s lying around, I mean, why not use those? Videos and images of the event provide evidence of something you might not otherwise believe. The thunderous engines of the MI-26 roaring, its rotor rhythmically lapping above it. The line linking the TU-134 and the MI-26 goes tense. And suddenly, the airliner lifted. The almighty power of the MI-26 is something to behold as it steadily climbs into the sky, the Tupolev Tu-134 trailing below it. If ever there was a single image that defined a truly wonderful piece of mechanical engineering, it was this. A small passenger airliner, weighing slightly less than the Statue of Liberty, heaved into the sky by this indomitable beast of burden that is the MI-26. So I really hope you found that video interesting. That is an incredible machine, an incredible helicopter. If you've got suggestions, I, I think it's a mega project. Some people have been like, Simon, the planes aren't mega projects. And I'd be like, you've seen how much money goes into them, right? <laughs> it's extraordinary. I think it qualifies. Let me know if you've got other suggestions below and I shall make them. And thank you for watching.